Well, a lot of the physiological processes in the body depend on chemical reactions taking place. So it's important to have a good understanding of chemistry sort of as a foundation for us before we get too far along in terms of physiology. When you think about chemistry, probably something like this is what comes to mind, an image of the periodic table of the elements. And this is a really beautiful way that chemists have of organizing a lot of information about different elements. There are a few key elements that we will be particularly encountering a lot of this semester. Uh, living things consist of, let me get my laser pointer here, uh, we have a lot of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, as well as hydrogen. Those are the four elements that make up most of our bodies. Um, however, there are some other elements present in trace amounts. Quite a few other elements are present as well. For example, sodium, uh, calcium, um, potassium, let's see what else over in this area. We've got chlorine, um, phosphorus, definitely that's in DNA. So we're going to be kind of jumping around in terms of where we're at on the periodic table. Let's just take a look at the breakdown in the human body. Again, we consist mostly of oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, but we have a small amount of lots of other things. And these are all critical for our physiology to work correctly. There are going to be a few that we will focus in on in this class a lot. Calcium, um, sodium, chlorine, potassium, those are going to definitely be showing up um, multiple times this semester. So when we think about these different elements, we need to be able to talk about the, the different sort of units that, that compose them. So when we talk about atoms, what's the difference between an atom and an element? An element is the type of thing that we're talking about, and an atom is talking about how much of the thing. So an atom is the smallest unit of matter that we can really um, deal with when it comes to elements. Atoms consist of a few key subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and the neutrons, as a reminder, they hang out in the very center of the atom, in what's called the nucleus of the atom, and then the electrons tends to float around uh, the periphery. They're in a cloud uh, that surrounds the nucleus. The thing about this atom that is very characteristic for whatever element we're talking about is the number of protons. So how many positive charges are there at the very center? That is what defines this as a given element. We call that the atomic number. The atomic number is how the elements are arranged on the periodic table. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one. That's because it has one proton in its center. Helium has an atomic number of two. That's because it has two protons, just like this, um, in its center. So atomic number is literally telling us how many protons. When we talk about atomic mass, that's more of a description of how heavy the atom is. And primarily the mass of an atom comes from its nucleus, so it depends on how many protons there are and also how many neutrons there are. Um, the electrons, they have a little bit of mass too, but they're very lightweight in comparison to protons and neutrons. So mostly the mass comes from protons and neutrons. So atomic mass is just the sum of those two things. How many protons are there and how many neutrons are there? All right, in atoms of a given element, okay, so a given element, always the atoms will have the same number of protons. However, the number of neutrons can vary. And this is how we get different isotopes of a given element. So you can have different isotopes, uh, which will have different atomic masses, right? They're way different amounts because the number of neutrons vary from isotope to isotope. Some isotopes are radioactive, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more when we, um, when we talk about imaging techniques in physiology. Radioactivity is something that can be dangerous, it can cause damage to living things, but it can also actually be a very useful tool. If we use it in small controlled amounts, um, it's extremely useful for imaging what's inside of the human body. So we'll come back to that later on in the semester. If an atom, um, has an imbalance of charges. Okay, so let's just start with a with sort of a normal atom, one that has the same number of protons as it does electrons. Okay, in that case, the charges would be balanced and it would be an atom that we're talking about. But if there's an imbalance, so perhaps the atom loses one of its electrons, well, then we're dealing with an ion. So an ion is an atom that has a charge on it. And that's a, that's a, when we need we need for you to know what we mean when we say ion. So ion, this means there's an imbalance of charges. Either there are um, fewer electrons than protons, 
or there could be more electrons than protons. Either way, overall, there's going to be a charge present. And that brings us to the idea of bonding, or at least it's going to help us head in that direction.